Book of Heaven, Volume 12, Part 4 November 27, 1917 The sanctity of living in the divine will is exempt from personal interest and waste of time. I continue in order to obey. It seems that my always lovable Jesus wants to speak about the living in his most holy will. It seems that when he speaks of his most holy will, he forgets everything and makes one forget everything. The soul finds no other thing but the necessity, no other good but to live in his volition. So, after I had written about his will on November 20th, my sweet Jesus, being disappointed with me, told me, My daughter, you did not say everything. I want you to neglect to write nothing when I speak to you about my will, not even the littlest things, because all of them shall serve for the good of posterity. In all sanctities, there have always been saints who, as the first, have started each kind of sanctity. So there was the saint who started the sanctity of the penitent, another who started the sanctity of obedience, another of humility, and so with all other sanctities. Now I want you to be the beginning of the sanctity of living in my will, my daughter, all other sanctities are not exempt from waste of time and from personal interest. As for example, a soul who lives attentive to obedience and everything, there is much waste of time. That continued saying and re-saying distracts her from me, and she mistakes the virtue for me. And if she does not have the opportunity to take all the orders, she lives restless. Another one suffers temptations. Oh, how much waste of time. She never tires of telling all her trials. And she mistakes the virtue of suffering for me. And many times these sanctities end up in ruin. But the sanctity of living in my will is exempt from personal interest, from waste of time. There is no danger that they might mistake the virtue for me, because I myself am the living in my will. This was the sanctity of my humanity on earth, and therefore it did everything, and for every one, without a shadow of interest. Self-interest takes away the mark of divine sanctity. Therefore, it can never be sun. At the most, as beautiful as it is, it can be a star. This is why I want the sanctity of living in my will in these times so sad. This generation needs these suns that may warm it, illuminate it, fecundate it. The disinterest of these terrestrial angels, all for the good of others, without a shadow of their own self, shall open the way in their hearts to receive my grace. And then, churches are few, and many shall be destroyed. Many times I find no priests who may consecrate me, other times, they allow unworthy souls to receive me, and worthy souls not to receive me. Others are unable to receive me. So my love finds itself hindered. This is why I want to make the sanctity of living in my will. In them, I shall have no need of priests for me to be consecrated, nor churches, tabernacles, or hosts. But they shall be everything together, priests, 
churches, tabernacles, and hosts. My love shall be more free. Any time I want to consecrate myself, I shall be able to do it, in every moment, day and night, in whatever place they might be. Oh, how my love shall have its complete outpouring. Ah, my daughter, the present generation deserved to be destroyed completely. And if I shall allow a little something to be left of it, it is to form these sons of the sanctity of living in my will, who on my example shall repay me for all that other creatures, past, present, and future, owed me. Then shall the earth give me true glory, and my fiat voluntas tua, on earth as it is in heaven, shall have its completion and fulfillment. December 6, 1917 Why Jesus Can Never Be Pleased With Acts Done Outside of His Will After having received Jesus in the sacrament, I was saying to my Jesus, I kiss you with the kiss of your will. You are not content if I give you only my kiss, but you want the kiss of all creatures, and therefore I give you the kiss in your will, because in it I find all creatures, and on the wings of your will I take all their mouths, and I give you the kiss of all. And as I kiss you, I kiss you with the kiss of your love, so that I may kiss you not with my love, but with your own love, and you may feel the contentment, the sweetnesses, the gentleness of your own love on the lips of all creatures, in such a way that, as you are drawn by your own love, I may force you to give the kiss to all creatures. And then who can say all my nonsense that I was speaking to my lovable Jesus? Then my sweet Jesus told me, My daughter, how sweet it is for me to see, to hear the soul in my will. Without realizing it, she finds herself at the heights of my acts, of my prayers, of the way I acted when I was on this earth. She places herself almost at my level. In my littlest acts, I enclosed all creatures, past, present, and future, in order to offer to the Father complete acts in the name of all creatures. Not even one breath of creatures escaped me that I did not enclose in me. Otherwise, the Father could have raised exceptions in recognizing the creatures and all the acts of creatures. In fact, as they would not have been done by me and come out of me, he could have said to me, You have not done everything and for everyone. Your work is not complete, nor can I recognize all, because you have not reincorporated all within yourself, and I want to know only what you have done. Therefore, in the immensity of my will, of my love and power, I did everything, and for everyone. So how could other things, outside of my will, ever please me, as beautiful as they might be. They are always low, human, and finite acts. Instead, the acts in my will are noble, divine, without end, infinite, as is my volition. They are similar to mine, and I give them the same value, love, and power of my own act. I multiply them in everyone. I extend them to all generations, to all times. What do I care if they are small? They are always my acts being repeated, and that's enough. 
And then the soul places herself in her true nothingness, not in humility, in which she always feels something of herself. And as a nothing, she enters into the all, and she operates with me, in me, and like me, completely stripped of herself, not caring about merit or self-interest but all intent only on making me content, giving me absolute lordship over her acts, without even wanting to know what I do with them. Only one thought occupies her, to live in my will, praying me to give her the honor. This is why I love her so much, and all my predilections, my love, are for this soul who lives in my will. And if I love others, it is by virtue of the love that I have for this soul, and that descends from her, just as the Father loves the creatures by virtue of the love he has for me. And I, how true it is what you say, that in your will one wants nothing, and wants to know nothing. If one wants to do something, it is because you have done it. One feels the ardent desire to repeat your things. Everything disappears. One does not want to do anything anymore. And Jesus, and I make her do everything, and I give her everything. December 12th, 1917, how the sun gives a simile of the acts done in the divine will. Continuing in my usual state, I was fusing all of myself in the holy will of my sweet Jesus, and I prayed, loved, and repaired. And he said to me, My daughter, do you want a simile of the acts done in my will? Look up, and you shall see the sun, a circle of light, containing its limits, its shape. But the light that comes out of this sun, from within the limits of its roundness, fills the earth and extends everywhere not in a round shape, but wherever it finds earth, mountains, seas, to illuminate and to invest with its heat, so much so that, with the majesty of its light, with the beneficial influence of its heat, and by investing everyone, the sun becomes the king of all planets and holds supremacy over all created things. Now such are the acts done in my will, and still more. As the creature does her act, it is small, limited. But as it enters into my will, it becomes immense. It invests all. It gives light and heat to all. It reigns over all. It acquires supremacy over all the other acts of creatures. It has right over all. So it rules, commands, conquers. Yet her act is small, but by doing it in my will, it has undergone an incredible transformation that not even to the angels is it given to comprehend. I alone can measure the just value of these acts done in my will. They are the triumph of my glory, the outpouring of my love, the fulfillment of my redemption. And I feel as though repaid for the very creation. Therefore, always forward in my will. December 28, 1917. Jesus wants the continuous acts of the creature. It does not matter if they are small, as long as there is the motion, 
the seed. He unites them to his own and makes them great. Continuing in my usual state and being a little in suffering, I was thinking to myself, how is it that it is not given to me to find rest, either at night or during the day? Rather, the weaker and the more in suffering, the more my mind is awake and unable to take rest. And my sweet Jesus told me, My daughter, you do not know the reason, but I do, and now I shall tell you. My humanity had no rest, and even in my sleep I had no respite, but I worked intensively, and this because having to give life to everyone and to everything, and redo everything within me, it was convenient for me to work without stopping for one instant, and the one who must give life must be a continuous motion, and an uninterrupted act. So I was in continuous act of making lives of creatures come out of myself and of receiving them. Had I wanted to rest, how many lives would not come out? How many, without my continuous act, would not develop and would remain withered? How many would not enter into me because the act of life of he who alone can give life would be missing? Now, my daughter, wanting you together with me in my will, I want your continuous act. So your awake mind is act. The murmuring of your prayer is act. The movements of your hands, the beating of your heart, the moving of your gaze are acts. They may be small, but what do I care? As long as there is the motion the seed, I unite them to my own, and I make them great, and I give them the virtue of producing lives. My acts, too, were not all great in appearance, especially when, as a little one, I moaned and suckled milk from my mamma. I amused myself in kissing her, caressing her, entangling my little hands with hers. When I was a little older, I picked flowers, I drew the water, and other things. These were all small acts, but they were united in my will, in my divinity, and this was enough. And they were so great as to be able to create millions and billions of lives. So while I was moaning, Lives of creatures were coming out from my moans. I suckled, I kissed, I caressed, but it was lives that were coming out. Souls were flowing in my fingers, entangled with the hands of my mama. And while I picked flowers and drew the water, it was souls that were coming out from the heartbeat of my uncreated heart, and they entered into it. My motion was continuous. This is the reason for your vigil. When I see your motion, your acts in my will, now placing themselves at my side, now flowing in my hands, now in my voice, in my mind, in my heart, I make of them the motion of all, and I give life to each one in my will giving them the virtue of my acts, and I make them run for the salvation and for the good of all. December 30th, 1917 Sorrow of Jesus because of those who steal from him the affections and the hearts of creatures. Continuing in my usual state, my always lovable Jesus made himself seen afflicted and was lamenting because of the many who steal from him 
the affections and the hearts of creatures, putting themselves in his place within souls. And I said to him, My love, is this vice so ugly that it saddens you so much? And he, My daughter, it is not only ugly, but awful. It is to turn upside down the order of the Creator, putting themselves on top and myself below, and saying to me, I too am good at being God. What would you say if someone stole a million from someone else and rendered him poor and unhappy? And I, either he should give it back, or he would deserve condemnation. And Jesus, yet when they steal from me affections, hearts, it is more than stealing a million from me, because these are material and low things, while those are spiritual and high. If one wants, the millions can be returned, but those never. So these are irreparable and uncancelable thefts. And if the fire of purgatory shall purify these souls, it shall never be able to return and fill the void of one single affection that they took away from me. Yet this is not taken into account. On the contrary, it seems that some go along selling these affections and they are content only when they find one who buys them, to make a purchase of someone else's affections without having any scruple. They have scruples if they steal from creatures, but they steal from me and do not give it a thought. Oh, my daughter, I gave everything to creatures, and I said, take anything you want for yourself, and for me, Leave me only your heart. Yet this is denied to me. Not only this, but they steal the affections of others. And this is not only from secular people, but from sacred people, from pious souls. Oh, how many evils they do, by certain directions, too sweet, by certain unnecessary compliances by too much listening, using attractive manners. Instead of doing good, it is a maze that they form around souls. And when I am forced to enter into those hearts, I would rather flee, seeing that the affections are not mine. The heart is not mine. And this from whom? From one who should reorder souls in me. On the contrary, he has taken my place, and I feel such nausea that I cannot adapt to being in those hearts. But I am forced to stay until the accidents are consumed. What a slaughter of souls! These are the true wounds of my church. This is the reason for so many ministers being snatched from churches, and no matter how many prayers they say to me, I do not listen. There are no graces for them. Rather, I answer them with the sorrowful cry of my heart, Thieves, move! Go out of my sanctuary, for I cannot stand you any more. I remained frightened, and I said, Placate yourself, O Jesus. Look at us within yourself, as the fruit of your blood, of your wounds, and change the scourges into graces. And he added, Things shall go forward. I shall humiliate man to the dust, and various sudden and unexpected incidents shall continue to occur to confound man even more. 
And there, where he believes to find escape, he shall find a tie. Where a victory, a defeat. And where a light, darkness. So he himself shall say, I am blind, and I don't know what else to do. And the destructive sword shall continue to devastate until everything is purified. January 27, 1918. Things shall rage more. Days are most bitter. Sweet Jesus almost does not come, or he does like a flash. And in that flash, he makes himself seen while he dries his tears, and without telling the reason, he runs away. Finally, after many hardships, he told me, My daughter, after so long that you have been dealing with me, you still have not learned to know my ways and the reason for my absence. Yet I have told you many times. How easily you forget my words. Things shall rage more, that's all. Then finding myself outside of myself, I saw, and they were saying, that two or three nations were to be rendered powerless to defend themselves. How many miseries, how many ruins, because other nations were clutching them so tightly to the point of laying hands on them in such a way that they shall remain powerless. January 31st, 1918, dissolving oneself in Jesus to be able to say, what belongs to Jesus is mine. I was abandoning all of myself in Jesus, and he said to me, My daughter, dissolve yourself in me. Your prayer, dissolve it in mine, so that your prayer and mine may be one single prayer, and it may not be recognized what one is yours and what one is mine. Your pains, your works, your will, your love. Dissolve them all with my pains, with my work, and so forth, in such a way that they may mix one with the other to form one single thing, so much so that you may be able to say, what belongs to Jesus is mine, and I, what is yours is mine. Imagine a glass of water that is poured into a large container of water. Would you be able to distinguish afterwards the water of the glass from the water of the container? Certainly not. Therefore, to your greatest gain and my highest contentment, repeat to me often, and in whatever you do, Jesus, I pour it into you, that I may do not my will, but yours. And I immediately shall pour my acting into you. February 12, 1918. Churches deserted and without ministers. Continuing in my usual state, my always lovable Jesus made himself seen so very afflicted and I said to him, My love, what's wrong that you are so afflicted? And he, Ah, oh, my daughter, when I allow that churches remain deserted, ministers dispersed, masses reduced, it means that the sacrifices are offenses to me, the prayers, insults, the adorations, irreverences, the confessions, amusements, and without fruits. And therefore, no longer finding my glory, but rather offenses, nor any good for them, 
since they are of no use to me any more. I remove them. However, this snatching ministers away from my sanctuary means also that things have reached the ugliest point and that the variety of scourges shall multiply. How hard man is! How hard! You have reached the end of the Book of Heaven, Volume 12, Part 4. Fiat.